Today in this video we will discuss about hacking, how to hack like pro. Hacking is just the act of finding a clever and counterintuitive solution to a problem. Hacking is not a crime, it's an art of exploitation and awareness which can be mastered like any other art. To master this art, there are some methods and guidelines which can help you become a hacker. This write-up walks you through the most important in the beginning phase of hacking, reconnaissance. This video will be split by three sections. The first section is overview of hacking. In this section we will discuss about what is hacking, who is hacker, purpose of hacking and type of hacking. The second section is setting up our lab, like how to download Kali in VirtualBox and etc. The third section is the penetration testing life cycle. In this section we will discuss about five penetration tester cycle. Then we will see one by one them. So, in this video we talk about full hacking terminology. If you want to become hacker you have to see this video from first to last. Now without further thing let's start. Please don't forget to subscribe if you want to be hacker. Now let's start by first section. People always ask what is hacking. So, let's start with what is hacking. Hacking is the process of finding the possible entry holes that exist in a computer system or a computer network, and then entering into them. Hacking is usually done to gain unauthorized access to a computer system or a computer network, either to harm the systems or to steal sensitive information from the computer. Through hacking, you can do anything that you're not supposed to do. For example, you can view information that you don't have permission to see or use a computer that you're not allowed to use. There are many different types of hacking, such as email hacking, computer hacking, server hacking, and web application hacking. Now you know what is hacking, I think, yeah. So, who is a hacker? I think this will be your second question. Most people think hackers have extraordinary skill and knowledge that allows them to hack into computer systems and find valuable information. The term hacker conjures up images of a young computer whiz who types a few commands at a computer screen, and poof, the computer spits out passwords, account numbers, or other confidential data. In reality, a good hacker or security professional acting as an ethical hacker just has to understand how a computer system works and know what tools to employ in order to find a security weakness. In a simple world, you may describe a hacker as an antisocial and introverted teenager who is just curious about things. However, there are various ways to describe a hacker in the digital world. Various things motivate an individual hacker to hack into a system, and every hacker employs his own set of methods and skills to do so. The common nature binding all hackers is that they are sharp-minded and curious to learn more about technology. Now let's go to, what is purpose of hacker or hacking? There could be various positive and negative intentions behind performing hacking activities. Here is a list of some probable reasons why people indulge in hacking activities. Just for fun. Show off. Steal important information. Damaging the system. Hampering privacy. Money extortion. System security testing. To break policy compliance and more. Now let's look types of hackers. Hackers can be classified into different categories such as black hat, white hat, gray hat, suicide hackers, script kiddies, cyber terrorists, state-sponsored hackers, hacktivists. Let's start with black hat hacker. Black hats are hackers who use their knowledge and skills to discover and exploit security vulnerabilities for financial gain or malicious reasons. The next is white hat hacker. White hats are ethical hackers who use their knowledge and skills to improve the security of a system by discovering vulnerabilities before black hats do. They pretty much use the same methods and tools black hats do, but unlike black hats, white hats have the permission of the system owner to use those methods. The next is gray hat hacker. Gray hats are hackers who are not as bad as black hats, but also not as ethical as white hats. They might help black hats in their endeavors, but they also might help in discovering vulnerabilities or checking the limitations of a system. The next is script kiddies. Script kiddies are hackers who are new to hacking and don't have much knowledge or skills to perform hacks. Instead, they use tools and scripts developed by more experienced hackers. The next is suicide hackers. Suicide hackers are ready and willing to perform an attack for a cause, even if they get caught and prosecuted. The next is cyber terrorists. Cyber terrorists are hackers who are influenced by certain religious or political beliefs. They work to cause fear and disruption of systems and networks. The next type of hacker are state-sponsored hackers. State-sponsored hackers are recruited by governments to gain access to secret information of other governments. The last is hacktivists. Hacktivists break into government or corporate systems out of protest. 
they use their skills to promote a political or social agenda. Targets are usually government agencies or big corporations. There are so many types of hackers for example, red hat hacker, blue hat hacker and more. This is just 6 types of hackers, you can get full video about types of hacking in my another my YouTube video. The fundamental skills you need to become pro hacker. These are the basics that every hacker should know before even trying to hack. Once you have a good grasp on everything in this section, you can move into the intermediary level. The first is Basic Computer Skills It probably goes without saying that to become a hacker you need some basic computer skills. These skills go beyond the ability to create a Word document, watch YouTube videos, or cruise the internet. You need to be able to use the command line in Windows, edit the registry, and set up your networking parameters. The second is networking skills. You need to understand the basics of networking, such as DHCP, NAT, subnetting, IPv4, IPv6, public v private IP, DNS, routers and switches, VLANs, OSI model, MAC addressing, RP. As we are often exploiting these technologies, the better you understand how they work, the more successful you will be. The third is Linux skill. It is critical to develop Linux skills to become a hacker. Nearly all the tools we use as a hacker are developed for Linux and Linux gives us capabilities that we don't have using Windows or the MacOS. The fourth is Wireshark or TCP dump. Wireshark is the most widely used sniffer protocol analyzer while TCP dump is a command line sniffer protocol analyzer. Both can be extraordinarily useful in analyzing network traffic and attacks. The fifth is Virtualization You need to become proficient in using one of the virtualization software packages, such as VirtualBox or VMware Workstation. A virtual environment provides you with a safe place to practice your hacks before you take them out in the real world. Eventually, you will want a virtual environment to analyze live malware or exploit the virtualization system. The sixth is Scripting Without scripting skills, you will be relegated to using other hackers' tools. This limits your effectiveness. Every day a new tool exists, its effectiveness diminishes as security administrators come up with defenses. To develop your own unique tools, you will need to become proficient in at least one of the scripting languages, including the Bash shell and at least one of Perl, Python, or Ruby. The seventh is Think creatively. There is always a way to hack a system and many ways to accomplish it. A good hacker can think creatively of multiple approaches to the same hack. The eighth is Problem Solving. Problem-solving skills A hacker is always coming up against seemingly unsolvable problems, requiring the master hacker to be accustomed to thinking analytically and solving problems. This often demands that the hacker diagnose accurately what is wrong and then break the problem down into separate components. This is one of those abilities that usually only comes with many hours of practice. There are so many skills you need to become pro hacker this is just eight. Now let's go to next section. In this section we will talk about setting up our lab. So, let's start by downloading VirtualBox or VMware. I use VMware but you can anything you want. If you ask what is VirtualBox or VMware, VirtualBox is a program that will allow us to install machines, just like normal computers, inside our own machine. We will have one computer, and we will install other computers inside it, acting as virtual machines. These are very important in terms of penetration testing. We're going to be using them a lot in order to set up a lab. It's very important to note that a virtual machine is just like a completely separate, working machine. There is nothing we will lose by installing an operating system as a virtual machine, and it will perform just like it does when installed on a separate laptop. Basically, instead of having four or five computers or laptops around us, Installation of VirtualBox is so easy, VirtualBox is free, and you can download it from the following link, I will put on the comment link if you want. Go to their website then click Downloads. You can download for Mac or Windows. everything you need is just click.
I am window user so I will click Windows Hosts. Then it will start download it easy. Now let's look if you want install VMware. VMware is not free but they are free for only 30 days. To download VMware, go to their website by typing on Google. VMware Workstation. Then click the first website. Scroll down little bit. Then click download now, then it will start download this easy too. Now we finish download our virtual machine. Now let's download Kali Linux. Kali Linux is coming with all of the programs and applications that we need to use pre-installed and pre-configured. This means that we can just install the operating system and start to learn hacking. There are two options for installing Kali. Install it as a virtual machine inside the current operating system or install it in the main machine as the main operating system. Throughout this video, we are actually going to be using it as a virtual machine, because using it as a virtual machine works exactly the same as using it as the main machine. It will be completely isolated from our computer running inside virtual box. If we break it, or mess things up, it would be very easy to fix. It's very easy to go back to other snapshots or configurations, and we won't lose any functionality by using it as a virtual machine. That is why we always use it this way. The steps are exactly the same, regardless of what operating system you use, whether you're on Windows, Linux, or OS X. The step for installing Kali Linux are as follows. Open your browser. Type Kali Linux. Click the first link. This is Kali Linux website you can read their documentation. Now click download button. Now choose your platform. Like I told you I will use with virtual machines. You can use whatever you want but if you are beginner I recommend it to start with virtual machine. Now click virtual machine. Now download if you use VMware click VMware if you use virtual box click virtual box. I will use virtual box. It will start, it takes time based on your network speed. After finish extract. Then you should get a file with the OVA extension. You will have the name followed by the OVA extension as shown here. Now let's install Kali in VirtualBox. Open VirtualBox. Click Add or Plus button. And go to Kali Linux directory then select OVA file. Now it will come in virtual box. Just click start, it will start our Kali machine. After start it will ask you username and password. The username is Kali. The password is Kali. Boom, now we install Kali in virtual box. You can check all tool by just reading Kali documentation. Now let's go to our next section. In this third section we will talk about the penetration testing life cycle. 
An ethical hacker is also known as a penetration tester in the industry. Ethical hackers are proficient with the penetration testing life cycle. An organization hires ethical hackers so that they can conduct several penetration tests on the organization's digital infrastructure with the management's approval and discover vulnerabilities in the system so that they can be patched before a real attacker targets the system. A pen test comprises of multiple stages. You cannot simply get into a system by using a tool unless the target is hopelessly vulnerable. So let's look at the five main stages a penetration tester will go through along with the tools they use to break into a network. They are Reconnaissance Scanning Gaining access Maintaining access Reporting Now let's start with Reconnaissance Reconnaissance is the most important part of a penetration test. It is where you gain information about the target. The reason reconnaissance is important is because the more information you have about the target, the easier it gets when you try to gain access. Once you map out an entire network, you can identify the weakest spot and start from there. Commonly used recon tools include Google and other social media where you can gather information about the target. If you are performing an audit of a company, you can go through the company's job posting to see the type of technologies they use. Once you have gained enough information, you can use a tool like Multigo to map the targets. Multigo also supports has the ability to automatically import data from social networks, DNS records, and custom plugins like Full Contact. The important thing to remember in terms of recognizance is that you never touch the target. Reconnaissance is similar to scouting and looking for information while you are far away from the target. In the reconnaissance stage, attackers act like detectives, gathering information to truly understand their target. The detail is everything, from examining email lists to open source information. Their goal is to know the network better than the people who run and maintain it. They hone in on the security aspect of the technology, study the weaknesses, and use any vulnerability to their advantage. Reconnaissance can be divided into two phases. Passive reconnaissance and active reconnaissance. The next penetration testing life cycle is scanning. This is the part where you come in contact with the target. Scanning is sending packets of data to the target and interpreting their response. Scanning gives you useful information about the target like open ports, IP addresses, operating system information, services installed, etc. The main objective of the scanning stage is to fetch specific information on the target organization related to their network and information systems. Throughout this stage, an ethical hacker needs to focus on getting information about live hosts, device types such as laptop, desktop, router, mobile, etc. operating systems, software, public-facing services offered. If possible, they should even try to find preliminary vulnerabilities. Vulnerabilities discovered during the scanning stage are known as low-hanging fruit. There are several tools available for scanning, but we will focus on effective tools like Nmap, HPing, etc. in this chapter. The goal of the scanning stage is to have information that can be passed on to the next stage of the penetration testing lifecycle. Nmap is the best scanner to scan a network. Nmap will help you map out a network and provide detailed information about the target systems. Nmap also provides a number of CLI options including scan exports that you can then import into exploitation tools. Nessus is another scanning tool but it is a commercial product. While Nmap will give you information about the target, Nessus will tell you how you can exploit the target by matching the vulnerabilities from the Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures database. OpenVAS is another open source alternative that is similar to Nessus. The third penetration testing life cycle is Gaining access This phase is where an attacker breaks into the system, network using various tools or methods. After entering into a system, he has to increase his privilege to administrator level so he can install an application he needs or modify data or hide data. This is the part where you gain access to the system. A successful exploit should give you control of the system to at least a user level. From there you perform privilege escalation to gain root access to the target. When it comes to exploitation, Metasploit is hands down the best tool in the market. It is open source with a commercial version as well and is easy to work with. 
That exploit is updated frequently updated with new exploits published in the common vulnerabilities and exposures database. So, you can match your scan results with the available exploits and use that exploit from Metasploit to attack the target. Metasploit has an advanced payload called Metapreter. Once you have gained access to the target system, Metapreter gives you options like opening webcams, dumping password hashes, and so on. Metapreter also lives in the memory of the target, so it is very hard to detect. For example, if your scan results tell you that the target has Samba version 3.5, you can use the Samba 2017 Cabo Verde Escudo 7494 remote code execution vulnerability to send a payload through Metasploit and gain access to the target system. Metasploit also has a GUI tool called Armitage. Armitage helps you to visualize targets and it recommends exploits by matching the vulnerabilities with the exploits database. The next penetration testing life cycle is maintaining access. Gaining access to systems is not easy, especially on corporate networks. After all the hard work you have done to exploit a system, it won't make sense to go through the same process to exploit the target again. This is where maintaining access comes in. You can install backdoors, keyloggers, and other pieces of code that let you into the system whenever you want to. Metasploit gives you tools like keyloggers and metapreter backdoors to maintain access to an exploited system. You can also install custom rootkits or trojans after gaining access. A rootkit is a piece of code that lets the attacker has admin access to the system it is attached to. Rootkits can also be installed when you download files from malicious websites. Trojan horses are software that looks like useful software, but can contain a hidden piece of malicious software. This is common among pirated software where attackers embed trojans within popular software like MS Office. The last penetration testing life cycle is Reporting Reporting is the final part of a penetration test. It is what differentiates between an attacker and an ethical hacker. Once your penetration test is complete, you summarize all the steps you have taken from recon to gaining access. This will help the organization to understand its security architecture and defend itself better. A report is also useful when you are working as a team. You will not be able to conduct a penetration test for a large organization alone. Reports will also make the client understand the efforts of the team and helps justify the compensation. I hope you enjoyed this video and learnt new things as expecting. Keep a connection with us and we have a lot more things for you. And this video full resources from book called Hacking How to Hack Like a Pro. Thanks for this book. Thanks for watching this article so far. If you like these videos then please share them with your friends and don't forget to subscribe and to like this video. If you have any questions or feedback then please drop a comment. And which is best for you, drop on the comment. Thank you for subscribing.